Being suspended from the game of football can be very depressing, let alone have you feeling like you're watching your family go to war or have a fight and you can't participate. A win, lose, or draw, and that's just the way it got to be. You got to be on the sidelines and they're out there going to war, fighting, clawing, battling, doing everything they can do to try to win that game. And you got to sit on the sidelines just helpless. I've seen plenty of players all across the league cry because they can't participate in the game. It's a very emotional and passionate game. That's the effect the NFL has on us players. Very physical, passionate. You know, that's the that's the mentality it will it will put on you when you you in the war or getting ready for that war. You see players crying all across the league. That's you know, that's that's a real feeling. That's a real thing. There's no faking in that. There's no faking. So that's a real thing. Know that. Know that. But gambling has always been a dominant force in the world. And now that sports betting is allowed in the NFL and in the sports world, it's taking gambling to another level. But the NFL is doing its best to make sure they are ahead of the curve when it comes to this sports betting and want to make sure that sports betting don't become detrimental to the NFL or the game of football. Right. They don't want no problems and no mix ups with the fixed games and and, and the, the players fixing games and all those type of situations. So that's why they instituting all these new policies and and trying to hurry up and stay ahead of the curve. But how to how do they get to this point with the players to try to negotiate these new policies? Right. In order to have successful negotiations. Right. Both sides have to give a little to receive a little. When you're trying to come to a resolution, you can't want everything your way. So it's always got to give a little to take a little. So it seems like the NFL PA and the NFL are listening and hearing players complain and, and put their input on things they seem deem unfair and, you know, want change. So this is why this all is coming about. And I think it's pretty cool that, you know, everybody is being transparent and coming to resolutions to to fix problems that, you know, players don't seem deemed unfair. It's a player's game, right? But the NFL policy will immediately help the Detroit Lions with the reinstatement of wide receiver Jamison Williams, right? The, the wide receiver room will automatically get an upgrade. He was a first round pick and they had high hopes for him. He had a few problems here and there, but, you know, it take a little while to get his rust, but he's going to have immediate impact because he got a lot of speed and stuff like that. But, you know, it's been a while, so we got to see how it's going to go for him. And also um, coming off suspension is the Titans offensive lineman Nicholas Petit. They were both serving a six-game suspension, and with the new policy, now they're immediately reinstated, which is good for the team. So, you know, hopefully that give them a little boost and – you know, they can upgrade their team, be a little better. But let's take a look at the new gambling policies, right? I want to highlight at the bottom. Check out the bottom, right? Betting other than NFL football in workplace or while working will result in suspension. You know, they got the suspensions down there, first time, second time, and all that. But I want to talk to you about that. It says it will result in suspension if you're gambling while at the workplace. And if you don't understand, the workplace is our home. This is where we have fun, enjoy ourselves on our breaks when we're not talking football or when we're not game planning, trying to win football games. We got to have some fun. So how do they plan on making a team turn in players for violating these policies? Me and, our, me and my friend playing checkers or or chess, or, or dominoes, or anything. We placing little wages. That's fun to us. You know, we always want to have a competitive edge and keep keep the fun alive and compete because that's what we do on a daily basis, and that is our professional profession to compete. So I don't see any... Uh, there is no team that is going to turn their player in for having some fun gambling on the side. That's what they mean, what they mean by this new policy. But... You know, it's a policy they got to put in, in in place for for whatever reasons. You know, obviously they want to protect the integrity of the game. So that is the main point. But no coach is going to turn in players and get rid of weapons that they want to use for this upcoming week's game and say, listen here, NFL, PA, such and such. We got caught playing dominoes. He was he was gambling for a thousand dollars. He got to be suspended. So, team. 
we lose such and such for this week. Ain't nobody doing that, man. Unless you, you know, player got a, the coach got a problem with the player and he's trying to, you know, get him released or anything like that. But I hear, I hear people talking all the time about the NFL is rigged and, and how it's fixed and scripted and all those things. But I don't understand how they feel like it's rigged and, and scripted. I feel like it's deeper than that because everybody that says these pretty much are gambling on these games. So when you're gambling, you're emotionally tied to these games because you want it to go your way. And sometimes you feel like it's going your way. But you have to understand how hard it would be to rig or fix a game. You know, it would, a variety of different people would have to be involved from the ref to, to the quarterback and, and probably the wide receiver. Everybody, a lot of people would have to be in tune into this fixing of the game. It's, it's what, nine to 11 refs in the game. You got 11 people on offense, 11 people on defense. So it would be extremely hard to fix a game. Yeah, you can get away with a few plays here and there, but to fix a game, man, come on, man. That's a pretty tough task. But on the other hand, you're asking a quarterback to get involved. A quarterback, do you understand how much a quarterback makes? Quarterback makes millions on top of millions of dollars. So if you're coming to a quarterback and you're saying, I want him to fix a game, do you understand the price that that would take for him to be involved, to even think about something like that, even if they did think about something like that? That would be ridiculous. But I I, I don't see this ever being a problem with the fixing of, of the game. For for the fans and, and, and the sports bettors, it's your emotions that you're attached to in, the, in these games when you're betting. You're coming up short, but it looks like you're about to have a victory most of the time. Uh, you're winning by 21 points, and then they come back and win by three points in the fourth quarter. So it's the bookie that's tearing you up, making you feel like this game is rigged and fixed. No, this game is not rigged and fixed. You just can't figure out this bookie, and this bookie is tearing your butt up. Sports betting will always continue, and it will continue to grow and grow and grow. It ain't going nowhere. And they, they have this here to stay. If you continue to feel like this game is rigged or fixed because they just came back from 21 points, man, you got to get out of sports betting business, man. You got to figure out another hustle because this, this ain't for you. You can't keep blaming it on the rigs and being fixed and stuff like that. But with that, all that being said, that's the, the new NFL gambling policies. And, you know, like gambling is here to stay. Sports betting is here to stay. And it's going to help the game grow and they finally teamed up sports betting and professional sports. That is what the way, what the world has been waiting on and it's finally here. So it's a new trend and it's everywhere. So place your bets, have fun, and, uh, you know, stay safe out there. Till next time.